Taylor Lautner stole the hearts of teenagers around the world in his debut as Jacob Black. But Twilight ended years ago, so where has he been since then? Where the hell have you been, Loka? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're looking at whatever happened to Taylor Lautner. For this list, we're taking a look at where this heartthrob has been spending his time since the conclusion of the supernatural romance Twilight franchise. Where'd you want to go? Are you kidding me? The top business minds in all Litchfield will be there. It's the ideal spot for me to sell my skills. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out Sound Mojo's latest artist, Domenica D. Find the link in the description below. If somehow you knew that your love could make a fool of me, tell me, baby, what would you do? Born in 1992 and originally coming from Michigan, Lautner spent more of his formative years invested in martial arts before getting into acting. In fact, he was so proficient at it that he'd earned a black belt in karate by the age of eight, and was encouraged by extreme martial arts founder and former Blue Power Ranger Michael Chattarandabut to take up acting. When he was nine, he made his acting debut in Shadow Fury, and his parents had so much faith in him that they moved to California permanently to help him land roles. Just relax, lay about, or my fist will put you out. His first lead role in a film was in kids' superhero movie The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl, and barely three years later, he made it to Hollywood when he was cast as Jacob Black. Jake, you're like buff. How did that happen? You're like 16. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. Age is just a number, baby. What are you, like 40 now? A minor role in the first movie, Lautner proved his dedication by bulking up to keep the part of Jacob in New Moon when he became Edward's rival. When are you staring up? You're sort of beautiful. Lautner was certainly popular, and the Team Edward Team Jacob rivalry intensified. But during his stint as the werewolf, he made the mistake of not branching out into other films. While both Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson took on a diverse array of jobs and are both still top-billed actors in their own right, Lautner stayed in the sidelines. The only semi-big role he landed was in Valentine's Day as part of a large ensemble cast, where he appeared alongside Taylor Swift, whom he briefly dated. Oh my god, baby, are you okay? Walk it off, baby. Just walk it off. You're still hot, baby, you're still hot! Like most of the Twilight movies, Valentine's Day did well at the box office but badly with critics, though he did make history at this point by being Hollywood's highest paid teenager. Once Twilight started to wrap up, everybody expected Lautner to become the next big action star, and he landed the lead role in the high octane thriller Abduction in 2011. Bear hug. That's all you got. Your mother hits harder than that. Show me something. So slow. Unfortunately for him, Abduction was critically panned, and not just for being derivative of similar movies like Taken. It was his performance specifically that landed the production in hot water, with his acting widely criticized. Don't you think everybody feels that way growing up? Do they all go to a shrink? In the US, abduction didn't even break on its budget, a large portion of which went to Lautner's $5 million paycheck. This point brings us to another stumbling block with his career. He's too expensive. Why don't you come out here and talk to me in person? I'd like that, more than you can imagine. But it's not possible. Why not? Hot off the success of Twilight, Abduction's failure didn't immediately put people off casting him. That happened because of the large payouts he wanted. He was initially attached to both Stretch Armstrong and David and Goliath for the respective sums of $7.5 million and $10 million. Both of these movies, and a handful of others he was tentatively attached to, never went into production, perhaps because of how much money they were trying to blow on their as-of-yet unproven star. It looked more and more unlikely that studios would get a return on investment from Lautner, and the situation grew even more dire in the wake of 2015's Tracers, which made the unusual move of debuting on DirecTV before going unnoticed in theaters two months later. Its lackluster plot centered on Lautner getting sucked into a gang of free-running thieves and didn't make much of a splash. If you fight with gravity before you're ready, you tend to get a beating. I don't know what I'm doing. After that, Lautner moved on to Adam Sandler's critically slammed The Ridiculous Six, which by all accounts was one of Sandler's worst outings, which is saying something. And uh, you are? 
I'm Lil P. I'm your son. I love you so much, Dad. I have three nipples. Lautner forged ahead and tried to get his career back on track with an ambitious passion project, Run the Tide, about a guy who runs away with his younger brother after their ex-junkie mother is released from prison and attempts to fix her relationship with them. I'm taking him. Bo's helping me set up a place in town. He's my brother, and I'm the one that raised him. I know. I'm the one that taught him. But despite having potential, Run the Tide didn't impress critics either, though it was far from being the worst thing Lautner's ever appeared in. Meanwhile, he also landed a starring role in season two of Fox's Scream Queens as Dr. Cassidy Cascade, who suffers a mysterious affliction making him believe he's already dead. I love you so much, Mom. I do. But I'm a healer. All this killing and revenge stuff. It's, it's you. It's not me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. But this isn't to say he hasn't had any good, likable, or memorable roles since leaving Jacob Black behind. Here goes nothing. What the hell are you doing? You don't live in the world you think you do. Jacob, put your clothes on. In 2014, he replaced Andy Samberg's character on British sitcom Cuckoo, when Samberg became too busy to return. Lautner played Cuckoo's long-lost son Dale, who arrives in Litchfield looking for his father, and became a mainstay for the next three seasons, which were all high-rated and popular. Newbie! No talking! So sorry, my bad. Bye, Rich. However, for the fifth series, which aired online only in early 2019, Lautner's character was absent without explanation, which caused the show's popularity to drop. No, um, go for it. This is very fun, actually. <laughs> How do you get it to make that noise? You gotta have soft hands and strong wrists. From this, we can take that he's certainly still capable of playing characters audiences like and want to see, given his absence from Cuckoo was so painfully felt. Some sources say Lautner just isn't particularly career-minded, and just doesn't actively seek out big roles, and in the past has said he cares more about his family and friends than about fame and fortune. While he's got a bit of a reputation for dating his co-stars, he's reportedly still on good terms with most, if not all, of his exes. And Cuckoo creator and writer Greg Devies has often complimented Lautner for being a generally good guy. Keep your eyes peeled, because Taylor Lautner isn't gone, and there's every chance he could bounce back with another iconic role. And the most important thing I learned is I can do this! You can do what? This! <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.